We're going to move to the third presentation, and uh, this is a, uh, another paper. Uh, it's entitled Comparison of Standard CO2 Pressure Pneumoperitoneum Insufflators versus Air Seal in General Surgery, a randomized controlled trial. This will be presented by Dr. Lucatina uh, from the Medical University of Berlin. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear chairman. My name is Rosalie Lucatina. I am a third year resident in the University Hospital of Heidelberg now, Germany. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and to present you a randomized controlled trial on comparison of air seal versus a standard CO2 pressure pneumoperitoneum insufflator in a visceral surgery. So I have nothing to disclose. So what is AirSeal? AirSeal is a neutral car system that enables uh, a circulation of CO2 during the whole uh, laparoscopic procedure. Um, they create uh, a horizontal air barrier inside the cannula, and uh, so the nozzles that insufflate the CO2 um, are stable, that uh, there are no valves inside the cannula. Uh, generating a stable pneumoperitoneum and a continuous smoke evacuation. So the intra-abdominal changing pressure is being adjusted every time you suck or there's a bleeding. The main uh, point of this uh, system is the port. The aim of our study was to investigate uh, the potential advantages of air seal in comparison with a standard CO2 insufflator system. In our clinic, we used the uh, Olympus UGI-3. The primary endpoint of the trial were the mean operative time in minutes and the uh, uh, postoperative shoulder tip pain measured on the visual aid scale 24 hours postoperative. All the secondary endpoints as the anesthesiological parameters, surgical side effects, and the length of hospital stay were measured. Now, the trial was conducted in January 2030 to January 2040 at the Sisters of Charity Hospital in Linz in Austria. Uh, patients who were uh, elected for laparoscopic uh, procedures of benign uh, gallbladder diseases, uh, hernias, or sigma resections were included in the trial if they met the inclusion criteria, and uh, an exclusion criteria was uh, previous extensive abdominal surgery. Now to the chart trial flow. At primary, uh, 261 patients were eligible for uh, the trial. We excluded 63 patients because uh, of not meeting the inclusion criteria or uh, declining to participate. At the end, 198 patients were randomized, uh, 101 to the laparoscopic surgery with air seal, and 97 to the laparoscopic surgery with the standard insufflator system. In the intention to treat analysis, uh, five patients in the air seal group uh, were converted to an open surgical procedure because of complications. And uh, no patient in the standard group was converted to an uh, open surgical procedure. At the end, per protocol analysis, uh, 96 patients in the air seal group were analyzed and 97 patients in the standard group. Now to the results, there were no uh, significant differences between the demographic data in the two groups. As we can see, the postoperative complications were equal in both groups, and the length of hospital stay was nearby equal, five days around in the ASC group and uh, six days in the standard group. The primary endpoint, the operative time, we could see that there was no statistical significant differences between ASL and the standard group. Also, by stratification uh, to laparoscopic cholecystectomy, herniotomy, and sigma resection, we can see that there was no statistical significant differences. But what we can see is that laparoscopic cholecystectomy in the air seal group lasted longer than in the standard group. But the more extended uh, surgical procedures, last, uh, like the laparoscopic sigma resection, was um, La, um, last longer in the standard group than in the air seal group. It was like in the mean difference around 20 minutes in advance for air seal. The second parameter, the postoperative shoulder pain. Here we can see that uh, uh, there was a significant statistical differences between postoperative shoulder 
pain. The Airzil group had more shoulder tip pain 24 hours after surgery than the standard CO2 insufflator group. Our conclusion is that Airzil versus the standard insufflator system is a safe and feasible method, but it has no statistical advantages when looking at the operative time. As we could see, the postoperative shoulder tip pain was uh, less in the standard group than in the Airzil group. Um, we can conclude from our experience with using Airzil that Airzil is uh, good for uh, may extended laparoscopic surgical procedure, and it's not uh, to use er in everyday laparoscopic procedure like uh, cholecystectomy. Thank you very much for it. This presentation is open for questions. David, please, if you could state your name, institution. Uh, hi. David Earl, Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, great study. Uh, what insufflation pressure did you use for both of those groups? 12 millimeter each. For both. So you weren't, yes. so most, most surgeons in the United States use 15, I would say. I mean, I normally we use 12. We always use 12. And, and secondly, you mentioned that in the air seal group there were five people that dropped out. Uh, was that included in that shoulder pain analysis? And what were the complications no, that led the, to them the, to the drop out? No, the protocol analysis excluded the patients that were converted. It was just in the intention to treat analysis. The shoulder tip pain results are without those patients that were converted. And, and what were the complications that required conversion? Were it's they related like, to the It's like bleeding that couldn't be handled with the system or that it was um, not handled or to the, do the, the most of the patients that were converted were sigma resections actually, maybe because of the intra-abdominal, uh, because of the intra-abdominal situs that was there that was not handled by with a laparoscopic procedure, so they converted. Thank you. <laughs>